Good morning. I wish I woke up to a nice massage like this. Yeah. A while ago, I was asked how I decide which fill stitches to use on which pattern. And I actually was asked that twice within a short amount of time. So that was all the motivation I needed to spend weeks trying out the six main fill stitches of hand embroidery so that I could share my findings with all of you. Clearly, I do not need much motivation to make a video. But let's face it, comparison is the best comparison. I figured the best way to show you how each of the six main fill stitches, which are satin, stem, split, brick, long and short, and chain, how they differ from each other is by sewing the same pattern six times. In bright rainbow colors, of course, because why not? I'm using this simple carnation pattern, which is a free one from DMC, and I'll put the link to it in the description if it, for some reason, lights your creative fire. I don't know. It's a really good one for this experiment because these flower petals can be filled in either in like a straight up and down side to side fashion or in an outline in curvy sort of fashion, both of which are techniques I'm gonna end up using with these different stitches. The printer was out of ink, so I traced this right off my computer screen. And because this is just about the fill stitches, I simplified it by removing all of these outline lines. Decided on those six main fill stitches that I'm going to be doing Doing, and then it was time to gather materials. Six hoops were easy to find since I have about 200 of these babies. I'm going to use the same simple white cotton for all six and then of course those brightly colored threads. Hoop them all up and then a quick time lapse of all of that tracing and we're off to the races. I'm not gonna show the stitching of all of these because first of all I did them in all sorts of random places and second of all this isn't really a tutorial. I have however linked the tutorial for every single one of these stitches in the description should you be in need of them. So let's take a look at those final products and discuss, shall we? I feel so professional. First up is the stitch that probably comes to mind anytime you need to fill in a chunk of space on a pattern, satin stitch. It's a classic. It's simple, yet often deceptively hard to do well. I have a whole video on my tips for the best satin stitch possible, which I will link up here for you, but let's talk overall impressions. Of course, the first thing to consider with proper satin stitch is that you are working in straight lines. There's no way to go around curves, which is often totally okay, as with this pattern. Using different angles of satin stitch for different sections helps add depth and layers to your piece and allows each petal to stand out separately despite being all the same color with no outline stitches in between. Satin stitch is also definitely the fastest stitch to sew, at least for me. This is the only flower that I was able to completely finish within one day. Some drawbacks to satin stitch. As I mentioned, you can't really take it around curves while remaining within the bounds of the proper stitch. So if you're ever trying to fill in something like a face, something that has lines or separations within each section, it might turn out looking a little wonky. Satin stitch also isn't great for larger sections because it is comprised of these single long stitches. I generally recommend staying smaller than two inches in length in order to avoid any gaping. If you can slide your finger under your stitches, that's not a great thing. Lastly, just something to note, while all of these flowers took a fair amount of thread, satin stitch definitely ends up with the highest amount of floss on the back of the piece. Something that could be beneficial if you like a nice clean hoop butt or could be avoided if you prefer to use what I call the thread saver version of satin stitch, which leaves a lot less thread on the back. Moving on to what I've often referred to as my favorite stitch, Let's look at chain stitch. Here we see the more curvy fill style in which I sewed along the edges of each section, then filled them in towards the center rather than sewing in straight lines across the petals as I did with satin. This places a lot less definition between the separate sections, making an outline in a different color or stitch more necessary to help each petal stand out. Chain stitch is also the most holy out of these six. You have to really pack your stitches together if you want no space to show between them. On the other hand, I absolutely love the texture it gives a piece. Like those swirls are so mesmerizing and the outside edges get this nice clean look even without an outline. I sewed all of the flowers with new skeins of floss so that I could compare the amount left over. And while most of the remaining cord seems fairly even, there is definitely more purple than anything else, implying that chain stitch generally uses less cord to cover the same area. Chain stitch is great for a more abstract or purposely textured fill stitch. 
I see it used a lot to fill in sweaters on a pattern because it has that really great knit looking grain to it. Split stitch and satin stitch could probably battle it out for the most commonly used fill stitch title. Remember how satin stitch isn't great at filling in large areas or going around curves or weird separations? Well, split stitch solves all of those problems. Because it's comprised of many, many smaller stitches, each of which tacks down the stitch prior to it, you can really manipulate split stitch into any pattern. I chose to stitch this one in a straight line fashion, but it can actually be used in the outline in style of stitching as well. It's this versatility that gets it up there as one of the most used stitches. Now for me, I was a little thrown off at first when it came to using split stitch because of the texture. I got so used to the smooth, even lines of satin stitch that it seemed weird at first to have all the separate stitches showing with split stitch. However, the final texture of a properly done split stitch fill is actually really even and smooth without being quite so glossy. So I often see this stitch done to fill in skin on any kind of portrait embroidery. Is this not the coolest texture you've ever seen? Looks very Van Gogh, right? If I were stitching this flower for any normal reason, stem stitch is not one of the options I really would have considered to fill it in. But look what experimentation can do for you. Like chain stitch, I sewed from the outside in with stem stitch. It could also be sewn in straight lines as I did with split, but I think that would have been much less interesting in the end. Stem stitch feels really similar to split stitch when sewing it. It's literally just the difference of going through your thread or to the side of it. But the final texture is actually quite a bit different, with stem stitch being much more swirly and layered in look. It may not be the first thing that comes to mind when you're considering which fill stitch to use, but give it a try sometimes and see if it can give your piece a really unique look. Long and short is another very commonly used fill stitch, namely because it's the basis of the technique of thread painting or needle painting, creating extremely realistic images out of thread, a technique which I have no mastery of and quite frankly, don't even wanna try, sorry. There's a lot of different ways to sew long and short, including what I refer to as crazy stitching, which is just throwing straight stitches on fabric in a barely organized way. I used a method sort of halfway between that and the most orderly style of long and short for this flower. And what I ended up with was a look that mixed satin stitch and split stitch for some really lovely texture. This did take a while to sew, so if I'm being honest, I don't highly recommend using long and short unless you are specifically trying to blend different thread colors in the same section. If you're going with all the same color as I am here, split stitch will probably be faster and require less concentration while sewing. Just what we all want, right? Last but not least, let's take a look at brick stitch. Some call brick stitch a specific style of long and short, while others say that it's just the fill version of back stitch. Both of those seem completely legitimate to me, so no arguments here. Now, while I do actually like how this flower looks, brick stitch is not something that would ever come to mind while normally sewing something like flower petals. The rigid structure and pattern of brick stitch makes it much better suited for stuff like, well, brick walls. <laughs> genius. But seriously, it's great for larger sections since it breaks up the space into so many smaller stitches. And you can make those stitches whatever length you want to vary up the final look. Like satin stitch, it's pretty straight up and down, so it's not going to be super handy in very curvy or abstractly shaped areas. So those are the six main fill stitches, and I hope seeing this comparison has been helpful to you in some good way. I actually had quite a good time sewing these, and I really like the look of them all together, mostly because because they are bright and textured, which are two of my favorite elements of embroidery. I was expecting to just stash these in my overflow box when I finished, but I think I'm gonna have to go make some space on my wall. So what's your go-to fill stitch? Do you often use one that I didn't try out here? Please do continue the conversation via the comments because honestly, I would love to know. And if two of you ask a similar question, then I might just start stitching on a whole new video for you, so feel free. Thanks very much for watching. You guys absolutely rock and it really gives me pleasure to get to make these videos for you. So I will see you next time.